Let's turn our Bibles. Two scriptures I want to read for you this morning, this afternoon. In this special Thanksgiving service of Allah Gordaro Summit. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, and God spoke all these words, saying, I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Please underline those words, out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, in the Passion Translation, the Bible says, a nation is exalted by the righteousness of its people, but sin heaps disgrace upon the land. Today, I want to talk briefly on the soul of Allah Udaro. Allah Udaro means progress. It means development. You see, God gave them the Ten Commandments. And most of us call it commandments, but to the Hebraic mind, it's not a commandment. It's a ten-word ketubah. It's called the Mura Codes. He said, I took you out of bondage. And then he now gave them this moral code. Saying, if you follow this moral code, you will not go back to bondage. And this 10 moral codes, many of us know it. It's in Exodus chapter 20. I don't want to bore you. Four of them is how we relate to God. And six of them is how we relate with ourselves. And it says, if you follow this code, you will never. Sometimes they followed the code and all was well with them. Sometimes they didn't follow the code and they went back to bondage. And over and over again, God delivered them. The most important thing that prospers a nation or an organization or an organizational economy that drives the entrepreneurship is also the most underrated. In this Alago Daro Summit, I've seen people share story. And today, I've come to share my own story. A story from the kingdom perspective. What do you think accounted for the West or even China's success? Many people will say it's their development. Many people will say it's this. But you see, there was a book written many years ago by Max Weber. Many of you wrote, who read political science and um, sociology. You read this book, The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism. In the book, he said that the Protestant Christian developed the Protestant ethics. And the word now calls work ethics. This ethics significantly influenced a highly developed capitalist economy of Netherlands, England, Scotland, Germany, Switzerland, etc. The Protestant ethic motivated the believers to work hard, be successful in business, and reinvest their profits in further development rather than frivolous pressures. Now, there's a story. There's a book written by David Eichmann. He's not a Christian. He's a former Time Magazine Benjamin Bureau Chief, a professor of history and writer in residence at Patrick Henry College, and wrote for Time Magazine from 1971 to 1994. The former Time correspondent, David Eichmann, interviewed the retiring head of state in communist China in 2002, Jiang Zemin, and asked what he wished for in regard to China's future. His response shocked Eichmann. And much of the word when he replied, this is well docu documented in a book called Jesus in Beijing. You can go and get it on Amazon, Jesus in Beijing by David Eichmann. And look at what did the outgoing Chinese president say. He said, I would like for my country to be a Christian nation. When asked why, he explained, hi, a panel of Chinese scholars I'm talking about Chinese scholars who undertook so many things. Had spent 20 years studying up why China continually lagged behind the West in science, industry, and culture. After considering every possible explanation, the conclusion was the religion, the religious heritage of the West that allowed them to reach such heights. The statement of the Chinese scholars was we were asked to look into what accounted for the preeminence of the West over the world. At first, we thought it was because you had more powerful guns. At the heart of your culture, the Christian moral foundation of social and cultural life was what made possible the emergence of capitalism and then the successful transition to democratic politics. We don't have any doubt about this, unquote. After much hesitation, at least some of the Chinese communists 
leaders now appear to recognize Christianity as one of the world's greatest sources of strength? And did China act on this information? The idea of a Christian moral foundation being associated with economic prosperity and social work was aptly captured in a BBC article by Christian Lando entitled, China Invest in Confident Christians. I know that when they ask me, are you a Christian? I don't like to answer quickly. Because it's not the term that matters, it's the working definition of the word Christian that matters to you. So I will first of all ask you, who do you think a Christian is? Or what is your definition of a Christian? And if you define it the way I'm not, I will tell you I'm not a Christian. Because Jesus did not call me a Christian. He calls me his follower and a disciple. There is no way that you live your life based on the moral foundation of religion and morality that a nation will not allow Godaro. These are the foundation that keeps a nation. The first president of America developed, said this happily and said, if we destroy the moral foundation of our nation, then our democratic thing is gone. My thoughts for Alagoraro as I round up. I assure you I'll be out here of here in less than 10 minutes. The first thing I want to share is understanding our prophetic and redemptive destiny. I was in the summit when I heard Chief John Odige Odiego was the one that said, this is the heartbeat of Nigeria. This is our prophetic destiny. And it's no wonder that Nigeria has a legislative prayer the second stanza of the national anthem that the former president, John, President Jonathan Goodluck, said must be sung. And he legislated it in August 2014 that it must be sung in every gathering, every state gathering. In Isaiah chapter 19, verse 25, the Bible says, Whom the Lord of hosts has blessed, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my heritage. Every time you see Egypt, please don't look at the white Egypt. Understand. That Egypt is you and I. And that's why the Egyptian, uh, 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 the pharaohs and those things that they cut, they cut off the nose to hide the heritage. That the black people were the ones that civilized the world first. And you must understand, when they say, let my people go, understand there was a pharaoh that said, let my people come. When God thought the world was in famine, he brought them to Africa. 70% 70% or 70% of the resources of the world is in Africa. Why are we so much in poverty? That's a discussion for another day. But I can assure you there's a poverty system over our lives that doesn't want to, to, to us to go. But there's a God in heaven. For he said, Egypt, my people, lift up your hands, say I'm God's people. Say it loud and clear. We are God's people. We are God's people. Number two I want to talk about is strategic praise and prophetic intercession. Listen. Moses wrote down the moral codes. But the first day that man saw the moral code, it was broken. Why? Because you can know the moral code, but not the spirit of the code. Moses understood the spirit of the code. And that's why he never saw any moral failure in Moses' life. Why? Because... He encountered it face to face. And the Bible says his face began to shine. But Moses covered his face. And that was the end of it. But as we lift up praise, the Bible says a king, in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 4, he said he appointed setting of the Levites to minister before the ark by giving constant praise and thanks to the Lord God of Israel. A man asking for his blessing upon his people. We need to understand that as we lift up praise and thanksgiving, what will happen is that what we cannot do by our thinking and our mind, God will break it and remove those poverty systems. There are six, six, three systems that put people in a trap. The poverty system, the poverty mindset, and the poverty powers. When they come together, you are in a trap. And you can never get it. But you see, I'm a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. God can provide for us. And the next thing we start, we should start raising reformational and transformational leaders. Just as we are doing in our state today. Today, really, a do state is the heartbeat of Nigeria. And I always tell people, that is my own thinking. You may argue with me, but that's it. The spiritual capital of Nigeria is a do state. When the heart stops beating, everything stops. But when a do state aligns, Nigeria will align. It has been well documented, and I believe... 
there's something. It is called alagodaro. The soul is the morality and the spirit of morality. As we begin to call down the name of God, as we begin to call upon the name, the two, two, David understood it and called upon the name of the Lord. And the Bible says he never lost any battle and he conquered all the territories for God. Why? He understood the moral code and he understood the spirit of the moral code. And my prayer today is that our governor and the leaders of this great state will understand there is something that makes a nation to go forward. Christianity is not just a religion. When you listen and you read the first sermon of Jesus Christ, the sermon of the mount, he allowed it. They say there is no money. Listen to me. We have a great provider. We call upon him. It will open doors that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. As I round off today, I want you to know, I remember, I remember the song of a great revivalist that I've gone to meet with the Lord. I sing that song because God's first language is not English. He can speak with you, so you any, in any language. Osaga so come so I know the governor has a wish in his heart and he has his prayer. But this song is singing over you. Don't be afraid. The captain of the sheep is in the sheep of Edo State. He will take us to the promised land. And I pray for you today that you will understand that God will give us the wisdom. He will give us the hindsight. This may be the seventh Alago Raro Summit. Get ready for more to come. That is from glory to glory. From level to level. There is no dull moment. There's no better yesterday. It's always a better tomorrow. I bless the state executive, the governor, and his wonderful people around him. And his wonderful wife. And everyone in Edo State. Pray for our state. Never you cost the state. When you wake up in the morning, say, God bless Edo State. God bless our governor. God bless his family. Let the heavens open over them. Let them give them wisdom to do it. And I pray and I believe that the, the, the men of God and the women of God in the land are interceding. Everyone intercede for our state. The Lord will keep you and make his face to shine upon you. God bless you.